Hi everyone, if this is your first time tuning on to Electronics with Professor Mughal, I welcome you all and I look forward to having a great time in this video. Today we are doing a review of a variable DC power supply from Raiden. I know this is probably a brand you never heard of but I hope I can convince you that this is one of the best lab bench power supply available in the market. Using this power supply, you can vary the voltage from 0 to 60 volt and you can also get up to maximum current readings of 12 amps. This power supply comes with a lot of features and today we are going to explore those features and I'm going to show you how to navigate through the front panel to use those features. But before we get started, we are going to look at the back side of the front panel and see what all is inside the power supply. We're then going to move on to the front panel and I'm going to show you how to use it and then finally how to create an interface between the device and the PC and laptop. So stay tuned, don't go away. So that's the induction coil right here. Here's the fan. Uh, the fan operates when the temperature exceeds 45 degrees centigrade or the current ratings are 4 amp or above. Uh, you got the input fuse right here. You got another induction coil right here. Here is the power supply basically that's outputting constant DC power 70 volt feed it into this circuit right here. Right underneath the socket what you see over here that's the communication module right here. You can actually connect the device through Wi-Fi connection with your PC or laptop. The blue looking thing that you see over here is that relay and right here that's an external temperature probe. That's actually sitting right here uh, in, in the box. Also right below these capacitors, the big capacitor that you see is an input fuse over there also. Let's now look at the front panel. So here's got the power button. You have the shift which is like a sub function button. You have this memory over here. You have the two buttons to set the current and the voltages. Keypad right here 0 to 9, up arrow, down arrow, right arrow left arrow here is the on and off button the difference between this power button is this is turn the display on whereas this on and off button is for providing supplying a voltage you have a potentiometer here encoder three terminals basically three electrodes here's the positive one and here's the common ground which is black in the middle what you see is a is a terminal given to charge the back micro usb cable connected to this rs232 to provide an interface between the power supply or pc slash laptop that's the name of the brand right RD6012. Let's now look at the display. Top left corner you will see the date over here, the time. Here is the beep on. Right now the keypad is unlocked because the cable is connected to the computer. So you have the sign over here. Voltage displayed over here. That's the output voltage. You have the M, which is currently set to zero. It's set to two amps right now, but it's actually outputting zero amps. And then you have two more displays over here. One for the over voltage protection and one for the over current protection. This right here is the memory. Basically, you can store nine different set of values for voltages and currents and over protection for currents and voltages. Constant voltage mode right here. That's the uh, status of the battery right now. The temperature readings are 31 degree centigrade at this point. Also displays in Fahrenheit as well. So say I want to set my voltage to 9 volts. All I need to do is to go here, select the voltage, move the cursor and then either use the knob the encoder right here to set the voltage or use the keypad so i'm gonna use a keypad here say i want to set to nine once you press nine and you press enter it will set the value and notice this value also reflects over here if you want to set a current press here and then say you want to set to 6m you press 6m and you press enter that's how you set the current notice here you can have two decimal digits so you're looking at a resolution of 0 0.01 that is fantastic which is usually most power supply don't have that similarly for the over voltage protection or over current protection you just need to press shift and then i set this time i'm going to use the knob say i want to do 10 amps and then all i need to do is press enter and that's pretty much it and similarly for the over voltage protection shift we say i want to do six volts and then press enter and that's the over voltage protection now store these values in the memory all you need to do press the memory button say i want to store these values for currents and voltages on m1 it's going to ask you do you want to store these values i can switch between cancel and enter using this these arrows right here and then the enter is basically this button right here and then i can always recall these values by pressing shift and m1 press 
enter shift m1 and then press enter and notice as i would do that my values will change and also it says m1 over here and look at the voltage and the i here all i need to do is turn it on now the reason it adjusting it back to zero is because you see the status here it's over voltage protection because i have the over voltage protection setting set to six volts and i am trying to input nine volts it will always fall back to zero that's the over protection feature and similarly it works the same way with the current now if i change this value right here for the over prediction or change the voltage value say if i change it to six and then press enter and then turn it on notice here now it stays six volt the voltage current and then you get the power again which power is going to be the product of these two values say if i want to recall all the values at m5 so i just need to press shift m5 and these are the values right here that i had stored m5 all i need to do is to press enter notice here these values will change and also it says M5 constant voltage let's now explore what is in the menu options press the shift button and then the menu bottom you got four icon this is a settings icon uh, this is take ok or take out you then have the boot power um, it's just keep it off don't worry about these things buzzer uh, it's on right now you, if you want to keep it off you can you have the logo if you want to display the logo on the display by the way it's not too big but it's like 2.4 inch uh, in diagonal you can set different languages including Russian uh, Chinese and uh, set it set it to English the backlight right here in order to navigate through these features you just need to press enter and then press the up down button or right left button and again if you want to change this value you press enter and then using the encoder as you can see pretty dim now but it goes all the way to five that's the brightest cancel or to exit you press this and then again i go here press hit enter and then i want to go to interface so that's the interesting part right here if you want to connect your power supply to your laptop or pc make sure it is connected to usb if you're using a software to supply uh, the power from this which is an optional thing okay you don't necessarily have to do that but i'm going to do that because i love that feature if you want to change that do that by hitting the enter and then using this tensiometer you can either create an interface using a wi-fi connection means wireless so that's awesome also there's another feature it's called ttl but i believe that does not work uh, when i talked to the manufacturer they told me it, this feature does not work but in the later uh, equipment they may have this feature baud rate the rate at which the device and the uh, pc or laptop communicates that is set to 115 200 address it go it can go from 002 to 255 you have to can you can basically free to use anything you like uh, date i have not changed the date but you should be able to change the date i'm just 2020 and then and today is I believe 10 10 here and then this is going to be 10 as well hit enter and that's it and then you can also set the time and also this feature right here you're just gonna keep it too slow the slower it is the better it is now moving on to the next thing at the bottom the home button right here I'm going to exit out you saw the display earlier where it was basically displaying current voltage and power you can actually convert that into a scope kind of display which I really love uh, about this device not the feature available in other power supply so if you like to see waveforms which I I do you actually gonna gonna love this feature yes and there you go now if i adjust the voltage say the voltage is now set to five if i adjust the voltage to say 10 volts you will see the change or let's say 15 you see there's a real time change in the green you basically see voltage and in the blue that is that's the bottom that's the current which is actually right now zero so that's a pretty cool feature so you can switch or toggle between uh, those two display I like to you know keep it this It's the only problem with this it does not have the scale on the y axis so you'd have to look at those but those values are over here on the right displayed here so you don't necessarily have to look at the scale but it would have been nice having that so this is oscilloscopic kind of feature and that makes it you know very really fancy i love that feature so i'm gonna go back to menu now shift menu and then uh, we just explored the home button i'm going to go here this is a save button like i said you can actually have preset values stored values if you are interested in looking at what are the values for m9 these are the values for m9 and lastly if i move over here product details over here so that's a product number sn number from where so let's now test the accuracy of this power supply uh, as you can see i have got 15 volts set up right now at this point i'm going to 
connect the positive terminal with the positive terminal of the multimeter here okay so that is connected the two reds are connected and also the two blacks are going to be connected here are the two connections that I have made and notice the voltage is 15.01 here and then you got 15.02 so extremely extremely accurate and I'm gonna do the same thing and if I actually let me do that actually if I need to change the voltage I increment the voltage here and look at the change the change is happening real time there's a very tiny delay very very tiny delay it almost changes at the same time 1903 20.02 see how accurate is actually absolutely accurate uh, they are accurate up to two decimal points which is very rare you don't see that normally let's now see uh, for the current I'm going to switch the terminals and then hopefully we can get the same similar readings for current as well DC current and notice here the current reading is 2.09 and that's exactly what I have over here too. 2.09 here and I got 2.09 here okay so extremely accurate obviously you got more decimal points in the multimeter and I'm gonna turn it off here for now now how about if you want to charge a battery so I have a battery in my hand right now it's a DC 9 volt battery all I need to do the first thing is to connect this red terminal to the middle one okay to the middle one right here I am going to connect the positive terminal to the positive terminal of the battery and I'm going to connect the negative terminal with the and notice uh, actually before I turn it on I'm going to set the voltage to a smaller value say 9 9 enter turn the power on and you can see it's actually charging it's actually charging that's the status right here once it fully charged it basically turns green and it you can also look at the rating here 0.042 amps hour and it's rated at 9.28 it doesn't need to actually be charged at this point it's pretty uh, pretty good right now so I don't need to it's a new battery but you can actually charge your battery let's now move on to software part and that is a very tricky part because I had very tough time getting this to run through a USB micro USB cable and I tried different cable it didn't work but then the customer service was excellent I bought it through Amazon for $119 and uh, the customer support was absolutely incredible the engineer who actually made this I actually spoke to him and he told me how to do the installation there's a trick so I'm gonna show you how to get it going so that says email right here I am going to go to this link right here it's a uh, again like I said you know it's not one of the most popular so they didn't have a good archive or you know step-by-step -step instruction or it didn't come with a manual it didn't come with a power cord it didn't come with the micro USB so I have to buy that separately so you can, any printer cable or if you have a Samsung phone that cable is going to work as long as you have the right software and the right driver installed and I'm gonna show you so once you go to this link and I'm gonna leave this link in the description box this is the manual right here PC software you need to install that you might need a WinZip to uh, extract all the files and then run it this is the driver that you need to install make sure when you double click you download it otherwise you will not be able to establish an interface between your power supply and your PC laptop so make sure you uh, download this software if it prompts you for a password it is one two three four and it will be listed on the file name also manual for how to get started uh, very detailed you got uh, you will find all the instructions in there as well once you do the installation that's how the interface it's very fancy and I know those of you who work in chemical lab they might have seen cyclic voltammograms this actually has a very decent interface it, will, it should automatically detect the port the communication rate remember this should match up with the one that you set up uh, in the settings uh, and then we are using address I just, I'm just gonna make sure so I go to shift menu here and address is 02 that's the address here that's 02 so I need to make that change here 02 okay everything looks good I'm going to click connect here and then hopefully I should be step uh, be able to establish an interface one reason the reason it's not working is because if you look at the interface right here it is set to TTL 
okay that needs to be changed so click enter navigate to that interface uh, hit enter again and then using the knob change it to USB similarly now it should work and I'm going to show you right here so click connect okay now as you see it detected uh, you can see the serial number from your uh, product model and everything. I can turn it on over here. As I turn it on, you see the light turn on here also. And you'll see the scope right here. The voltage right now is set to 9. It jumped from 0 to 9. So in the green is the output voltage. In blue is the output current. So I am going to make a change over here. I'm going to move this voltage from 9 to 12 and you'll see the change will be reflected also here on the display and on the screen on the software as well i'm going to so let's make that change and hopefully it should reflect on the software and on the device at the same time so 9.01 actually i'm gonna make 12 and then hit enter and you notice here it changed it to 12 volt here and also over here 12 volt and as you can see in the if I go to this graph and if I scroll in, scroll out, you should be able to see how it looks. Say if I jump to 24 and then hit enter, it goes to 24. So similarly, you can set the current over here. You can adjust the backlight of the scope here. So notice if I go here, it will dim a little. And if I go all the way to the very left, then it darkens, correct? So let me just set it to 5 because that's how I would like my display to be. Synchronize just make sure you know that baud rate right here is set to the same value uh, Here I can call out different memories that I have so say if you remember data uh, One which is basically m1 that we store if I click here. These are the values uh, Set to voltage is set to 9 current is set to 6 and over voltage protection is 6 You can change these values if you like over here and once you make that change you click show right and once I click show out all these values will be changed everything will change over here see it went from 24 down to 9 volts but that's how uh, the data was stored in data one similarly you know whatever the data you may have want to it's a very nice feature because if you have the power supply which is used by multiple people that is a great option and similarly you know if i have the battery charging unit which i can do real quick right here and we will see what happens and you see as I make this connection to the battery, it actually go, went to connect it. Went to connect it, it reads the voltage, which is 9.28 temperature and then output also. So this is a great feature right here. And similarly, basic information about what's going on. 70 volt is coming into the power supply and then it's tuned down. The output voltage, current here, output power, and all the features that we have on the front panel of the scope, you will also see it over here. Some of the features, you're probably not going to use it, so I'm not going to go in details. But if you want to, uh, you know, look at the data points, you can actually click here, save to local, and it will import everything that you have done in, say, past 30 minutes or something like that. Okay, so it has a great interface and I really love it. You can also connect it through Wi-Fi. Let me turn it off. As soon as I turn off, you see the light goes off here. I can disconnect. And if I wish to uh, connect it to the Wi-Fi, I need to just say sure, don't worry about it. No, what you need to do, which I was unable to do, is you need to connect to the Wi-Fi network. If the Wi-Fi network is, is not detected, this put in the uh, IP address of your machine and then hit initialization and then next. And all you need to do after that step is connect. For some reason, I was not able to do it because it would tell me that the router is too far away. You need to be close to the router. But anyhow, I'm not going to use that feature, so I'm not going to bother about it because I'm using a cable to create an interface. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is a wonderful power supply. I really encourage you. It's only $119 and if you can afford, I know there are tons of power supply available in the market and some of them are really, really good brands and those range from $60 to $300, but for a mid uh, this is 119 so that's actually pretty cheap and for what it offers this is one of the best uh, lab bench I think it's available in the market so check out the link in the in the description box and if you like this video please give me a feedback and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and I shall see you in the next video enjoy your rest of the day and stay safe folks